Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Romeo, and I welcome you to our biweekly seminar. Today we are going to talk about county road design. Jack is going to show you how to use road, road edge design, and it will include creating a terrain model, horizontal or vertical alignment, cross sections, and earthwork calculations. We will be recording today's presentation, and we will mail you a link to the YouTube movie in case some of your partners miss the presentation. For those who are new to Soft3, here's a little background. We are Vancouver, British Columbia at best. We are a civil software company being for more than 25 years in the business, and we have an impressive list of clients. Our philosophies make it easy to use, save engineering time, provide speed, accuracy, and innovation. Before we get going, I just want to make a brief announcement. RoadEng version 7 is going to be released shortly. We are also releasing Sothry Optimal, our new technology for optimizing the vertical alignment of a road. I encourage you to check our website for more information about RoadEng version 7 and Sothry Optimal. That being said, I will hand off to Jack. Jack? Thank you, Romeo. Okay, I will um, just do a couple of housekeeping uh, things before I get started. There is a question panel where you could ask questions if you um, if you want to during the presentation. This presentation will last about half an hour or so. So let's just go on. I'm going to start by importing a county uh, road data set in our train module. I've created an import specification for a, um, a county road data set. It's a total station file. It could, by the way, be a uh, LIDAR file. This happens to be a total station file. And it could be a GPS file. Could be any uh, format or file that you want to um, import data. And this is what the uh, format looks like. It's a uh, comma delimited file. The northing is in the first column. Easting is in the second column. Elevations in the third column. And there's a code in the fourth column. And here's some of the codes. And some of these codes have been connected into features, such as let me just find one of these codes that's been connected. There's one. Flow line right. Flow line right. There's three of them. And then there's a few center line. There's a couple of center lines. And um, point features, um, by the way, the, um, the features that have been connected into line work are um, have a color as well as a line type. And also, they've been, most of the features have been designated as brake lines. What is a brake line? A brake line is a feature where there's a definite change in slope. You want your uh, tin to actually stop and be forced to stop at brake lines, and that's what the software does. It doesn't want to, it's not going to skip over brake lines. Other features, such as fence line, fence, um, Features might not be good brake lines because they don't usually follow a um, a change in slope. Uh, they usually follow wherever a farmer decides to put up his fence. And then there's point features such as this ground shot here. So there's line features and point features. Let's just import the data. Once you've, once you've created your import specification, you save it as default. Press OK and uh, import the data. This data set, by the way, happens to be in Imperial units. If you are up in Canada, then um, you can also um, import a uh, total station file um, in metric units. I'll open up this file. Use my import spec. 
which is this import specification right here. Open up this file right here. Let's just check a few of these tabs. There is no projection for this file, so I'm just going to leave it an undefined projection and nothing else is checked, so uh, no need to worry about any of the other um, parts of this. Let's just import the data set. There it is. There's a center line, and then other features, like I said, road edge features. There's a lot of them and flow lines and gravel edge features. And they are all brake lines in this case. Next step is to calculate my tin and contours. Press the generate tin button. minor contours at one foot interval, major contours at five foot interval, minor contours will be instead of a gray I'll choose a red, major contours will be a uh, black, and major contours will be labeled, minor contours will not be labeled. Press OK. There's my contours. Oh, by the way, uh, just to reiterate what Romeo said at the beginning, uh, we will go through um, design process the um, after I've done this uh, step, which I've already done, creating a tin and contours is we're going to um, go on to uh, the location design module and do a horizontal alignment vertical alignment and then I'm going to show you a our new technology called Softree Optimal our vertical optimization software gives you the lowest cost of vertical alignment based on constraints that you input into the software then I'll show you some output and then I'll show you how to do a quick drive through of your road let's just calculate our tin and conches which I've already done and um, select the point where I want to start Save my file. I'm going to save it as countyroad.ter. Go to my location design module and start designing this road. File new. Open up that terrain file that I just saved. countyroad.ter start at that current point which I selected at the beginning of that road you can see I'm having a little bit of an issue here uh, my current point is falling off the edge of the model I will fix that I'll just move the point a little bit further ahead and secondly I will extend my model out module setup alignment extend ground you can do that in the location design module. It will just take the last slope and continue it on. There it is. The ground has been extended from this point further. Before I proceed on to uh, doing any kind of alignment, we're going to move this point back a bit. And then I'm going to uh, get a set of templates, county road template. This, uh, this template here happens to be a gravel template perfect for low volume roads but this happens to be a rural paved road two lanes so I'm just going to open up a, um, a civil um, county um, template two lanes paved with a couple of shoulders one on each side you can change the parameters of these um, components before I go on to doing any kind of design, uh, let's just talk a little bit about templates. Templates are made up of components. 
and components are made up of parameters. This template happens to be made up of six components, uh, rural road left, rural road right, ditch left, ditch right, slope left, cut fill slope left, cut fill slope right. And if you double click on a um, component, you can change its parameters. This is a 10 and a half foot lane width on each side. Base thickness is around 0.45 of foot. Base slope. Sub base thickness is 1.35 feet. If you decide to change any of these, let me just change it to one foot. And then notice that it doesn't match up quite well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the right side copy and paste my left side to my right side. So now they match up quite nicely. I'm not going to talk about the ditch component or the slope component there. It's quite self-evident. You can just double click on them and change any of the parameters. We're going to use this template. It's going to be my default template. There it is right there. Now we can start with horizontal alignment. So just to reiterate the steps that I've already done, I've imported some data, I've tin contoured the data, I've selected a, a template that's perfect for a low volume, not, not a low volume, sorry, a, um, a rural paved county road, two lane county road. Now I'm going to start doing my horizontal alignment and then vertical alignment. And I'll show you the optimizer, vertical optimization software. Get a screen layout that will set up my screen for horizontal alignment. Make sure that this, this screen layout sets up my screen so that I have my section window, my... Um, plan window and a horizontal curve panel. Now it's just simply adding in IPs, PIs. Left click once. It will rubber band, rubber band me to the last point. Left click again to touch, tie it down. Move a little bit further ahead. Left click once. Left click again to tie it down. Move a little bit up higher. If you want to, if you want to move an IP around, you just you just hover your pencil over the IP until it changes to a box, and then you can move that PI or IP around. Let's just go to the end of my alignment. Add my final IP or PI in. Left click once tie back to an existing road that I have over here. It's a highway, I think. Let's add in some curves. Use these buttons right down here to jump from PI to PI. I just, just in case you didn't notice that, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go back to that end point and jump back put in a circular curve. Most county roads are not designed with spiral curves, but you can choose spiral curves if you want to. I'm going to use minimum radius and then give it a 50 mile per hour, and that will give me a radius of 900 feet. And it's got a super elevation of 6%. Apply. There's my first PI. If I want to uh, move that around again, I can. Let's pull it back and just see what happens. See how the... Um, I personally don't like how the, um, the background looks, so um, I'm going to wash it out a bit more. It looks a little bit too uh, vibrant for me. Go into my uh, 
do that again, right click over my plan window, plan options, background plus sign, properties, wash out my background by about 75%. I like to personally see the line work, the uh, center line, the edge of roads, and the slope stakes. Set this as my default curve, jump back, get my default, it doesn't fit. This next curve, this previous curve was designed for 40 miles per hour, so I'm going to just use that. Still 6% super elevation. Go on to, uh, just so that you can see again, I don't think a lot of people noticed when I moved the IP around. Let me just move this one around and just show you how the um, the alignment updates as I do that. Move it back there. Go on to vertical alignment. Get a screen layout that sets my screen up for vertical alignment. I'm going to do manual design for you, and then I'll show you how the optimizer can design this road for you. Excuse me, I'm just adjusting my uh, headset here. And just an easy process. There's one IP all the way, or one PI, all the way at the beginning of my uh, alignment left click once anywhere after that to the right of that first PI. Left click again to tie it down. Before I go too far, let me just show you, um, what, talk a little bit about what you're seeing down here, this colorful um, red feature that's down at the bottom here. This is your mass hall diagram. Right now, because we're sitting, because we haven't done any vertical alignment at all, you're seeing a lot of red meaning that it's endlessly uh, wasting. Let me just change some, uh, double click on that mass hall diagram and you can see the different colors here. As you've seen, red is waste. We don't see any blue for borrow yet because I haven't um, created any borrow yet, but you might see some along the way. Yellow is overhaul. Green is free hall. For imperial design, free hall distance of 1,000 feet would be good. And overhaul distance of 3,000 feet would be good. Let's continue on with the uh, vertical alignment. Left click anywhere to the left of that last IPPI. You can see I'm starting to balance a little bit better. There's less um, waste, and I'm starting to see more green. Let me just add my move this PI all the way up here. Just continue on in that fashion until you get to the end of your alignment, and then we'll put some vertical curves in. You can see a lot more balance going on. Left click, left click. There's a little bit of bore right there. I'll try to get rid of that before we um, finish today. Left click, left click. You can also see the software is putting in grade labels on the actual line as well as in this um, data window that you see here. Speaking of data window, you can see volumes also here, not just in the mass hall diagram, but you can see your cut volume, your fill volume, and your mass hall. Add a couple more IPs. 
BIPs or BPIs. Then once you're at the end of the alignment, I'm going to go back to my um, second IP PI and put in some um, vertical curves. There. Put a 50 uh, mile per hour or 40 mile per hour curve, vertical curve. That will give me a K value of approximately 53 or 54, a length of about 143 feet, and a site stopping distance of about 309. This is all based on um, AASHTO tables. If you want to type in your own site stopping distance, you can turn off that auto. If you want to type in your own K value, you can. You can just turn off this auto. I'm going to leave it at the default 40 mile per hour, 40 mile per hour. Apply. Set that as my default. Jump. Get my default. Apply. Jump. Get my default. Apply. Jump. Get my default. Apply. and continue in that fashion. Jump, get my default, apply. I got a little bit too much borrow here for my liking, so I'm going to pull this IP down a bit more. Put this curve in and then pull that IP down. Pull it down a little bit more. Get rid of some of that borrow. Down a bit more. Now I got a little bit too much weight, so I'm going to pull back up. There. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to move on to show you the optimizer. So up to this point, after um, the terrain module, we have done a, a horizontal alignment, a manual vertical alignment. Now I'm going to show you how the optimizer can actually put a vertical alignment in for you from scratch. I'm going to delete the entire vertical alignment. Edit. Delete range. Not all points, just profile points. Set up my optimizer. Go into new. Give it a name. Optimal. Description optimal. Spacing. Turn off all spacing. Put in a spacing about 50 uh, feet. Just so I don't have a lot of points. 160 points is good enough. The question was if the uh, road is designed, uh, there's a question if the road is designed for a specific design speed. Why are you using, because this specific design was, why are you using the uh, different design speed for, for individual vertical and horizontal? Um, for the vertical, I used the lowest, the lowest design speed, which is 40. But one of the curves was designed to a 50 uh, design speed, speed specification horizontally and uh, vertically um, and horizontally uh, one of the other curve was 40. So I just used uh, a different design speed uh, for each of those curves. Does that answer your question? You could use uh, specific um, design speeds um, 
for the entire design if you want to. But this specific design was um, had different design speeds for each of the horizontal curves. Go into my standards. It's going to be a series of curves and tangents. 100 foot um, distance for my curves as well as 100 foot distance for my tangents. 60k for sag and this should be about 40 miles per hour. 60k crest. Control points. I'm going to add a control point at the beginning of the alignment. You can add control points anywhere you want. Uh, good control points are at the start of the alignment, end of the alignment. Tie uh, specific points down, uh, such as bridge abutments. I'm not going to talk about pits, and I'll just mention the costs. I'm going to use the default costs. This is what the software uses to calculate your lowest cost vertical alignment. Excavation at $12 per cubic yard. So cut cost $12 per cubic yard, fill cost $4 per cubic yard, and then hauling cost $8 for a free haul, $4 for overhaul, and then $2 for end haul, and then there's loading costs also. So I'm just going to use these uh, default common earth values. I'm not going to talk about any of the other tabs. Just uh, process my um, and proceed. Have the software calculate my um, lowest cost vertical alignment from scratch. Even within a few seconds, you should have a um, an optimal solution. Okay, it's found a uh, solution. What this means is, at this point, we got we are at most one percent away from optimal. I could wait it, wait for it to go to um, zero and then it'll just automatically stop. Or I could stop it right now and just cancel and yes. And it will uh, give me a um, the result. It has found a successful solution. But it's telling me that I need to put in a borrow pit because I have 43.89 cubic yards of overburden that could not be filled. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as is and then set this as my current alignment. There's the optimal solution. See how the software has found an optimal solution for you quite quickly from scratch. And there's no borrow or waste. There's a little bit of borrow right here and right there, but most of it is free haul and overhaul. And it's staying with the um, constraints that I've given, given it. Quickly show you how to do some um, plan profile sheets and cross-section sheets. And then um, I'll end it there, but I'll just quickly do this. Eleven by seventeen. change my labeling. I've got labeling that's every 20 meters or 20 feet. I don't like that. I'm going to change it to 100 feet.
And also I'm going to change the profile labeling. And I'm going to change one more thing. I don't like the fact that it's starting in the middle of my uh, page. I'm going to start a little bit closer to the edge, to the left edge of the page, and I'm going to give it a um, give it more stations. I want to see more stations, probably about a thousand feet per page. That will give me um, eight pages of cross sections or sorry, of um, stationing. And it'll also put in a little bit of over overlap into my, um, into my page. There's the first page, second page, third page, fourth page, and so on and so forth. OK, before I finish off, I'm just going to do one more thing, show you how to do some cross sections. These cross sections have been set up to 100 foot intervals. Let me just change it so that the layout is showing me two by two, so four cross sections per page. You can also put in a grid if you want to, grid lines. There is a grid in there, but you can also put in grid lines, minor and major grid lines. I'm not going to do that today, but you can. Let me just show you how to do that, just double click. Options, grid, plus sign, grid lines, and then just change the format of your grids. I would like to uh, thank everybody for uh, joining us on our um, bi-weekly seminar. Join us in a couple weeks for another uh, for another seminar. I think the next one's on optimization, exclusively on vertical optimization in a couple weeks, if you wouldn't mind joining us. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye.